from Colonial Life Arena in Columbia, South Carolina. It's women's college basketball and a non-conference Palmetto State matchup as the South Carolina Gamecocks play host to the Buccaneers of Charleston Southern University. I'm Dave Weinstein alongside the former Gamecock Brett Ball. South Carolina returns home from South Dakota, still undefeated. It wasn't easy, but they get everyone's best shot. And today, Brett, it'll be the Buccaneers who try to knock off the number one team in the nation. Yes, Dave. South Carolina leads this series 7-0. Charleston Southern is a relatively young team with a small roster, um, but they've already seen Power 5 type play in the likes of Duke and Clemson earlier this season, now in South Carolina. Coach Garcia made it very clear she understands the type of environment that she's coming into. She doesn't want to get in a foot race with South Carolina, but also wants to manage turnovers. For South Carolina, they're coming back home to finish out, to close out their non-conference schedule for today's game and on Wednesday. And they're just coming in with a dominant force on offense and on as well as on defense. And coach, um, again, stressed about uh, again, the per importance of rebounding. They lead the nation in rebounding with 50 rebounds per game. And they're also joining, having an early Christmas present with Chloe Kitts joining the roster. And I think this is just a great matchup for both teams to close out non-conference play. Some high scoring games of late from Zaya Cook. She was excellent in the second half against South Dakota State. Zaya Cook, explosive athletic guard, leading scorer in the last two games with 18 points versus South Dakota State and 20 points versus Liberty just two games ago. She's an experienced guard who can attack the basket. Even though she's a little has been a little inconsistent from the three, if left wide open, she definitely has the capability of knocking it down. And for the Bucks, Kennedy Jackson struggled on Wednesday against ETSU. She's a power five talent. They'll need her to step up today against the Gamecocks. As you said, Dave, yes, power five talent on the team, good anchor for offense. She's been experiencing some foul trouble lately, but the game, um, today's game is a what could be what we consider a, a bounce back game for her. She has the opportunity to show what she's capable of doing in the paint. Uh, she's the most experienced player, and Coach Garcia needs her on the floor for scoring momentum. Saxton and Jones. And it's controlled by South Carolina. Here's Cook right off the bat. No good. Boston with the offensive rebound. Cook for three. Got it. <laughs> As we just said, Dave, she has the capability of knocking down that shot. That's what South Carolina is going to need out of Zai Cook to get, get the offense going early. 18 last game against South Dakota State. 20 the last time we were in this building against Liberty. Bucks two and eight overall. 0-5 on the road, looking for their first road victory of the season. What a victory it would be if it comes against the number one team in the nation. Shamaya Lay for three, off the mark. And Cook will let it go out of play. South Carolina 10-0 overall, 5-0 here inside Colonial Life Arena. Look at Dawn Staley in her 15th season as the head coach, a couple of national championships here in Columbia. Cook finds Fletcher. Fletcher running the point today for the Gamecocks. Cook off the mark. And the rebound will go out of play. Again, Zaya Cook, when she's feeling it, she's not afraid to, to, take, to knock down that shot. Luis Garcia in her second season as the head coach at CSU, previous five seasons on the staff at Auburn. She was also the interim head coach there for a season. Here at Alabama as well, so she has SEC coaching experience. A block from Aaliyah Boston. And Gamecocks will look to push. This is Bree Beal. Boston, top of the circle. It's short. And the rebound for Hicks. Go ahead, Brad, I'm sorry. Good, yeah, it's going to be a good matchup for for Jackson and, and Boston tonight. We're interested to see how, how that plays out for them. Well, this is Jackson. Shamaya Lay, the senior guard from Dayton, Ohio. Her shot is short, and the rebound for Aaliyah Boston. Fletcher. Boston with position inside. And she'll draw the foul. She was fouled by Zaire Hicks. And that's a mismatch. Boston goes 6-5, Hicks goes 5-7. Yeah, definitely a mismatch there. Great job for Cook at recognizing that from across the floor and getting Aaliyah the basketball in that position. 
So Leah Boston heads to the line, 71% free throw shooter. Just missed a double-double at South Dakota State, had 12 and nine. She hits the first. Would have been her 67th double-double of the season. She'll try to pick that up today. Boston gets them both. A five nothing lead for the Gamecocks early on. Zaire Hicks, redshirt senior guard from Memphis, Tennessee. She gets it inside to Kennedy Jackson. Jackson against Beal. Nice move from Jackson. Her shot no good in the rebound to Aaliyah Boston. It's no surprise that Beal has her as a defens defensive assignment as Jackson is the, you know, one of the offensive threats for Charleston Southern. In and out for Fletcher. Boston, the follow-up. She's fouled once again. And that goes that that contributes to that 47% of the rebounding of their own missed shots at, for South Carolina, accounting for 48% of their second chance points. Th those plays that, you know, you're following up to the basket of missed shots. Um, those, you again, create further opportunities for your team to score. That's a great rebounding team. The Gamecocks average 50.4 rebounds per game. That's third in the nation, 18.1 offensive. That's good for sixth. Another look at the foul. It was called on Alberg, her first. Freshman from Sweden. Seven nothing lead for the Gamecocks. Four points for Boston. Hicks checked by Cook. Now it's Leah Boston on Hicks. Alberg for three. She's short. And the rebound tracked down by Bree Beal. Fletcher. Excellent ball movement from South Carolina. Saxton shot no good. Beal with the offensive rebound. Off the glass and in. There you go, another second chance point for South Carolina. How good was Bree Beal in the matchup at South Dakota State? Oh man, she was just all everywhere. She contributed, she was a great, just con contributed in so many areas with score, scoring, steals, rebounding. Again, just an all around um, threat on the floor. Her stat line, really impressive. It was nine points, six rebounds, six steals, five blocks, three assists. Just did everything. Coach Dale, he said, I don't think there's another player in the country that can do what she does. 12 seconds on the shot clock for the Bucks. Looking for their first points. Albert, no good. And Cook will look to push. Saya Cook drives in the paint. Rebound for Jackson. She's triple teamed. Gonna have a jump ball. Possession arrow in favor of South Carolina. You talked about Kennedy Jackson, her importance spread today. She's gonna have to deal with Aaliyah Boston, Camila Cardozo when she checks in. Saxton as well. Boston gets the roll as Kennedy Jackson hit the floor. You're right, Dave. And right now she has she's assigned to, well, it looks like a Bree Bill and she's rotated between Bree Bill and um, Boston to guard her. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Just being able to manage that type of play and still get open. She's getting some great looks, but again, just not being able to finish. Shamaya Lay. This is Kennedy Jackson. Now Lay, second on the team in scoring. 7.2 per game, puts it up, no good. And the rebound to Bree Beal. Fletcher passed on the shot, instead tried to get it inside to Saxton, who's fouled. Nice seal on the inside by Victoria Saxton. Fletcher, again, eyes up, getting to her the ball in the right position and, get, and putting Saxton in the best position to score. So Jackson picks up her first. She's taken out. She did foul out last game against ETSU in only 12 minutes. Boston, in and out. Rebound to Alberg. Buccaneers team that averages only 50 points a game this season. The culprit has really been shooting in turnovers. Hicks 
Long range, no good. And whistle. And that will go against Charleston Southern. And Madison Adamson, sophomore from Hoover, Alabama. She picks, picks up her first. She's the team's top rebounder. Had a career high 15 at College of Charleston on December 4th. Bree Hall checks in for the Gamecocks. She replaces Zaya Cook. Hall shooting well from three this season, 40% on, on the year. Boston, Fletcher for three. No good. Hall with the rebound. Looks like the Buccaneers are playing some sort of 2-3 zone defense. Well, with Sanaya Jones, who got the block on Bree Hall. Jones goes 6-4. She's the tallest buck out there currently. She's posting up Boston. You can't get it to her. 10 seconds for Shamaya Lay. Checked by Boston. Instead, it's Hicks for three. Got it off the glass. Nice shot by Hicks. She's very patient. Um, recognizing the clock was running down and just also recognizing that you're open, knocking the down, knocking the shot down and getting your getting your team on the scoreboard. And the Bucks are on the board. Hicks a 21% three-point shooter coming in. At a season high 13 on Wednesday against ETSU. Boston drives baseline, kicks it out to Fletcher. Beal for three. That's good. Great shot by Beal. Again, as we just talked about her, her ability just to just fill up a stat sheet in scoring and rebounds and just uh, extremely athletic and a great con uh, contributor to the game when she's on the floor. When you fill out every category, that's yeah. a three Beal game. Yeah, that's, is <laughs> that's what's to be expected from her. When she plays on the wing, she leads the team in blocks, steals. They get it inside. Shot no good from Jones. That's a great lob pass, recognizing the open man. You just got to get that one to connect. Hall, an open look from the wing. Great shot by Breezy Hall. Great look for Bree Hall. Again, she just has the capability of taking it to the basket or recognizing the defense and say, hey, I'm open. I'm going to knock this one down. She's been rewarded for her play this season. More minutes, nine minutes a game last year, up to 16 a game this year. Shot no good from Alberg, freshman from Sweden. Uh, miscommunication that time between Boston and Bree Hall. And it takes us to immediate timeout. 2.19 left to go in the first quarter. South Carolina all over Charleston Southern, 17-3. Welcome back inside Colonial Life Arena. The Gamecocks lead the Bucks 17 to three. South Carolina, 28% from three-point land so far this season, but they're three for four today, Brett. Yeah, as you write, coming into the game, 28%. Today is shooting set are already shooting 75%. And you have players you expect those shots to come from, like Zia Cook, Free Hall, uh, Free Bill. Those are the type of players, uh, those are the players that have the capability of shooting the, shooting the three. And that's where they become an offensive threat. When they're hot and they have the ball, they definitely have that ability to knock down those shots. And that's what South Carolina is going to need, not only in non-conference play, but in conference play as well. Been a solid first quarter so far for the Gamecocks. Their offense looking good. New point guards this season, but still playing up-tempo, pushing the ball down the floor. They'll capitalize in transition before the defense sets up. But, Brett, they really take good shots. They know what a good shot is and what a bad shot is. And they've been dominating in the paint and on the offensive glass this season. You're right when you said just good shots. So that's, that's meaning calculating the shots, being able to read the defense, um, looking inside first. And if the inside is clogged, as you can see, most teams are running. Um, a 2-3 zone against South Carolina, but recognizing, hey, when they're so focused on the post players and you have guards out, um, they have the capabilities of shooting, shooting that shot and being a scoring threat from beyond the arc. And when you're a scoring threat beyond the arc and on the inside, that's, that's pretty, tough to, pretty tough to stop. And 
Conversely, Charleston Southern just one of 11 so far, one for six from three. You see a, a new addition to South Carolina team, Chloe's kit, number 21, just really started here a couple days ago. So Chloe makes her debut. Freshman forward from Florida, number 17, recruit in the class of 2023. Chose to enroll early, and here she is. She's checking Adamson. One second for Lay. She misses everything. I've been intrigued to see Kitts, Brett, She's been described as a, a versatile player, can play forward, can play guard. Pretty similar game to Leticia and me here, but maybe won't handle point guard duties. Right, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I agree with you, Dave. I'm excited to see what she's gonna uh, produce on the floor, uh, particularly with this lineup. I'm getting familiar, for one, with fast college basketball playing. And again, just using her athletic ability. As you can see, she's tall, long, and I'm excited to see what she's gonna produce. It's Alasia Cooper. Ran out of space. Here she is in the corner. She'll try the three. Can't get the bounce. Cardozo fighting for the rebound. Whose ball is it? It's Charleston Southerns. Getting caught with a 17 to three lead here. A minute 20 remaining in the first. Jasmine Jackson, freshman guard from Jacksonville, Florida, bringing up the ball for CSU. This is Kennedy Jackson, spin move. Her shot off the mark. Adamson tried to keep it alive, instead will go the other way. That's not a bad move for Kennedy, a nice little fade away um, because, of, you know, because of the size, but again, just being able to have to be able to get those type of shots to connect. Bucks now one for 13 from the floor. This is Kitts against Adamson, pulls up. Her shot is short. Boston with the follow-up. <laughs> Again, South Carolina, usual cleanup. Whenever that ball is going towards the basket, you have five jerseys going towards, um, going for the rebound, and that's the result that you get an opportunity for a second chance point. Leah Boston has eight points and eight rebounds already in the first quarter. Well on her way to a double-double. Kennedy Jackson against Cardozo. She travels. It'll be a turnover for CSU. Again, those turnovers that Coach talked about early in the game that you have to manage. You know, if when you don't have the basketball, uh, you can't score. So being able to manage the basketball and not getting them to, to, to rush you but still playing your game, that's going to be very key for Charleston Southern in this game. Turnovers plagued them in their loss on Wednesday to ETSU. 23 in that one. Cook pulls up. Too strong. A whistle on the foul. It's going to be called on the Bucks. It's going to go against Jasmine Jackson, her first. So Chloe Kitts will go to the line. Looking for her first collegiate point. And there it is. First point for Chloe Kitts comes on a free throw. Yeah, I'm sure she'll remember this in her playing career that her first game was from, first points were from free throws. In and out on the second. There's Cardozo just before the buzzer. She had an opportunity. That brings us to the end of the first quarter, a dominating first quarter for the Gamecocks. 9-0 run to end the half. They lead Charleston Southern 20-3. That was a 9-0 run to end the quarter. South Carolina leads Charleston Southern 20-3. The Buccaneers just one for 13 from the floor, Brett. Yeah, uh, it's just a rough shooting percentage. You know, if you're not making shots, it's really tough to win a game when they're not getting in. And then they've had actually good looks. They've been getting the ball into Jackson, getting the ball into their post players, into Jones, um, but just not able to connect. Um, you can see they try to alter their, their playing or their shots a little bit, doing fadeaway shots, um, but they're just still not being able to connect. But if they're able to, to get those shots, they're getting, they're getting good looks, but just not being able to make those shots count. We've had trouble keeping 
South Carolina off the glass. Second chance points, 10 to none in favor of the Gamecocks. 10 of their 20 points have come on second chance opportunities. Yeah, I mean, that's again, that's uh, the, the nature of South Carolina, who they, who they are. They, um, part of, again, part of their DNA, they 48%, 47% of rebounding their own missed shots. And so they're actually just, again, doing what they do best, following up. Um, again, when that ball goes up in the air, they're, all their jerseys are falling up. Carly Andrews trying to get it inside to Jackson. Instead, it's a turnover. And Talasia Cooper the other way gets it to Kitts. Off the glass and in. Transition nice. basket for the Gamecocks. Yes. Beautiful, nice transition play for, for South Carolina. You can see them shooting a the gap a lot on defense as well. That's how Cooper was able to get the tip on the basketball. And again, uh, Kitts just kept running. Three points for Kitts. And another turnover for CSU, a travel call. Yeah. And these are turnovers, as um, Coach will call them, as uh, self-inflicted. You know, they're not anything necessarily the defense is putting so, so much pressure. Just little small little missteps here and there that, you know, could, could cost your team later down the road. Turn the ball over 247 times coming into this game, as opposed to 147 turnovers for their opponents. So you're talking 100 more turnovers they've committed than their opponents in only 10 games played. Yeah, and that's what Coach Garcia talked about before, managing those turnovers. And again, especially when they're self-inflicted, they're not, again, necessarily caused by the defense. Um, again, you have to have the basketball to score. Pull-up is good for Zaya Cook. If Charleston Southern can get the turnovers under control and start shooting for a higher percentage, they'll have a lot more success this season, especially as they get into Big South play. Yeah. And it works to their advantage. And in this case where, you know, they're seeing all of their – having this experience where they are having a lot of turnovers, but at least they can take this experience and apply it to conference play. Offensive rebounds being dominated by South Carolina, eight to one. Quick hands from Watkins. It'll be another turnover for CSU. It's off of Sanaya Jones. Twenty-four to three, Gamecock lead. Asia Cooper. Cardozo from the foul line. No good. Jackson comes down with the rebound. That's a good shot and good look for Cardozo. And she just had to shoot with a little bit more confidence there. Camille averaging 9.8 points per game, up from 5.4 a season ago. Hicks. And rebound to Chloe Kitts. She'll bring it up herself. Watkins inside. Another offensive rebound for the Gamecocks. An open look for Zaya Cook, too strong. Cardozo and on the third opportunity the Gamecocks convert. <laughs> Again, just another um, great play with Cook knocking down the three, what she's capable of doing, capable of making those shots, and then Cardozo there for the cleanup. They're out rebounding CSU 20 to seven. Trying to get inside to Jackson. Surrounded by several Gamecocks, jump ball is called. And possession arrow in favor of South Carolina. Kirich, Fletcher checks back in, the grad transfer from Georgia Tech. Hit six points at South Dakota State. Season high in minutes played. Earlier in the season, Brett, we weren't sure who was going to be the starting point guard. It was kind of a split between her. Raven Johnson, we've seen some of them here, some of Cook, but really Kiara Fletcher has emerged as that starting point guard here in the 2022-2023 season. The three-pointer is good from Chloe Kiss. <laughs> Great shot from Chloe Kiss. You can tell she seems like she has not skipped a beat from high school. Yeah. There's Chloe's family cheering her on today. Great transition. And Dave, as you said, yes, Fletcher has has really just taking um, taking the lead um, 
and managing the, the point guard position has done a great job. Again, she has great court vision, sees the floor, and she knows how to get the basketball to, her, to the post players at the right time. And a ton of experience. She was an outstanding player at Georgia Tech right. before yeah. her injury. <laughs> Missed last season with an injury, but she was a thousand point scorer there. Foul's gonna be called on Kennedy Jackson, her second. It'll send Ashlyn Watkins to the line. Watkins like to improve her free throw shooting. She'll have an opportunity here, just 31% coming into today. It's the first. An impressive looking freshman from right here in Columbia, South Carolina. Didn't score at South Dakota State. Limited minutes, but she's had some nice totals this season. 14 against Hampton, 14 against Clemson. Everyone remembers the dunk. Yeah, for sure. She marked her her ability to, to make an impact on this program early. And she's just going to be one of those freshmen that, of course, you just keep your eye on as she continues to develop. I mean, again, she's going to make a great contribution to the program. Too strong for Adamson. Cardozo with the rebound. Here's Kitts. She pulls up. No good, it was a long two. Another opportunity here for South Carolina, and they convert, that's Ashley Watkins. Great job, I love to see the two freshmen just work. I mean, and again, Kitts, you, you would never have thought that she just, uh, she just arrived. She seemed so comfortable, and then again, knowing how to get the player, um, the, the ball to the open man, and Watkins was just able to finish. Watkins with the rebound off the deep three. Time, Cooper unable to connect with Kitts. Think of all the veteran star power on this team. You think of Aaliyah Boston and Victoria Saxton and Zaya Cook and Bree Beal. Say, oh, well, what would South Carolina do? What would a team do when they lose all that talent? <laughs> Look at the talent-rich <laughs> team and all the freshmen on the floor yeah. right now and, and Cooper and, and Watkins and Kitts. Here's Cooper on the steal, lays it up, and it. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Dave. I was just thinking about the same thing, is that you know you have three freshmen on the floor right now with this unit, and you have some experience. Uh, Fletcher to you know kind of just be the floor general with this, um, with this experience on the floor, and they're doing a great job. Here's another steal. This is Chloe Kitts. Cooper makes a move inside. Unable to finish, but she draws the foul. to immediate timeout. 4.41 left to go in the second quarter. South Carolina leads Charleston Southern 35-3. And welcome back. South Carolina leads Charleston Southern 35-3. Buccaneers one for 17 from the field. This tremendous defense from South Carolina, of course, having something to do with that, Brad, but you're there. Yeah, as Bucks, you, how are you going to score in this matchup? You know, I mean, that's a great question. Um, it, it's really tough, again, when you have the dominance um, in the size. And again, Charleston Southern are getting great looks on the inside. They're just not able to, not able to connect the shots. Um, they have to continue to, again, move the ball, be patient on offense. Also, to push the floor um, in, in transition. Anytime they get it out, um, just try to push it in transition instead of settling, um, settling down. Um, but yeah, also communication and protecting the ball. A lot of the, a lot of their turnovers have been contributed to self-inflicted wounds. Nothing again necessarily connected to. Um, some of them not being connected to South Carolina's pressure, but just a walk here and there, a turnover again, a, a, just again self-inflicted wounds. So again, got to continue to play smart and play their own game by slowing down. Cooper. Misses the free throw. Only two of eight on the season coming into today. Averaging 13.4 minutes per game. This is both tapped out by Boston. It's controlled by Lay. By Lay, second on the team in scoring. Career high 20 against Georgia Southern on November 13th. Played all 40 minutes in that one. Trying to get inside to Jackson in the post. Can't get the bounce. Again, another good look with Jackson, just got to get it to connect. And we should see more blue also crashing the boards to, to get an opportunity for a rebound. In the corner, that's Zaya Cook. No good. It's Nia Jones with the rebound. Oh, 
trying to get it to Jackson and feature her in the post. She is the power five talent in this team, a transfer from Oklahoma State. Trying to post up Saxton. Five seconds for Hicks. The left to hurry. Jackson unable to get it inside to Saniya Jones. Another turnover for CSU. Yeah, I think um, CSU just you know made a decision that they just ran out of ran out of options at that point. She tried to keep her in a high low pass, but again just wasn't able to finish the play without the clock running out. Boston from inside the arc, no good. Saxton with the rebound, but first we're gonna have a foul called on CSU. It's Kennedy Jackson, that's her third. And that's what we talked about early, Dave, is her foul trouble and, and getting her on the, keeping her on the floor and just having to play smart because she's been, um, you know, an offensive threat in terms of size and the paint. But now, you know, with Jones and the, the game, she has to take that position. We talked to Coach Garcia about Jackson. She said, you know, got a couple of early fouls against ETSU, having to keep her out of foul trouble today, because it really halts her momentum. Some of the things she was teaching her was just, just don't lead with your upper body, use your lower body to get position early. Fouling out against ETSU, of course, serves as a warning sign coming into this matchup. Just trying to be a presence in the paint. Wasn't able to showcase that against the Buccaneers of ETSU. A travel called on the Buccaneers of Charleston Southern. Yeah, and again, it just could be the, the, this, the turnovers. Again, could be just the, the physical presence of South Carolina. Uh, I know Cooper has had, when she was in the game, just had just an immense amount of pressure on um, on CTSU, on, um, on number 12. Hicks trying to cut down her vision and making it very tough for her to even get the ball to her teammates. Saxon fighting inside. And we'll go the other way. Nice help side defense by Auburn. She's been a little quiet this game, but she's been present in, in terms of crashing the boards. I missed two threes earlier, but again, these are shots that she has the capability of knocking down. She was three for three from deep against ETSU. That was a season high nine points. That one misses everything. She's the team's top three point shooter percentage wise, 39% coming into today. Doesn't shoot it often, but when she does, it's from three. 18 of her 23 shots this season from three for Alberg. Whistle and a foul, it's going to be called on CSU. It's going to be on Zaire Hicks, her second. And I think that's just a little mismatch possession there. Hicks found herself to be at the bottom of the zone and looked up and she was matched against Victoria Sax Saxton who, were, who was cutting in baseline. And then again, that's just communication for Charleston Southern. Three-pointer off the mark from Zaya Cook. Another offensive rebound for the Gamecocks. They lead 35 to three, under two minutes remaining in the second quarter. Five seconds for Zaya. Beal for three. Off the mark and the rebound to Giddens. Carly Andrews, Jones, a whistle. And again, we'll go the other way. Andrews did a good job giving the ball to Jones. At that moment, you know, you gotta be, just make up your mind and be ready to either knock down a shot or make a post move. Um, again, another turnover just from self-inflicted wounds, being rushed by the defense. Um, just have to slow down and realize what, what opportunities they have to score, whether it's to take them to the basket or knock down the shot. This time we're going to have a whistle that goes against the Gamecocks. A little against Saxton. Taria picks up her first foul. Coach Garcia, we had a nice chat with her yesterday. 
talked about the matchup with South Carolina. She said, look, if we protect the ball, we won't be in a track meet. We want to limit the turnovers first and foremost. But in the half court game, see what we can navigate, try some different schemes. But she told her team the non-conference is really for getting ready for the conference play. 11 opportunities to build winning habits. Every game in the non-conference is an opportunity to do that. It's just to, be, to execute the right habits, to build the right habits. And where do we need to improve in this game? You know, despite the score, it's no different. We want to showcase the habits that we built, try to work on the ones that we need to work on. You're absolutely right. Um, Albin, the team's leading scorer, freshman, even though she's coming off the bench. She's one of those uh, players that she's talking about building good habits, you know, leading the, consistently leading the team in score, even though, again, as a freshman. Um, but she can take this game and take games like this against, like we said, against Power Five conferences and look back at them and apply what you learn um, to conference play. She's the team's leading scorer, 9.2 per game, comes off the bench. It's quite a debut for Albin, 22 points, 13 rebounds in her debut against Georgia College. 18 points in the other win for CSU this season against Western Carolina. She's a fun player to watch. She was impressive against ETSU. That's a great look nice to Sanaya Jones. Great pass. We've just talked, again, great court awareness, getting the ball to 22 to Jones and getting it to connect. Pincox can hold for the final shot of the second quarter. Zaya Cook looking up, sees 10 seconds. She'll make her move. Cook against Alban. Now it's Beal from the corner. In and out, Boston. That one no good. So it brings us to halftime here in Columbia. A dominant half for the Gamecocks. They lead Charleston Southern 35 to six. Yeah, just a tough, uh, a great half for, for South Carolina. Um, Charleston Southern, again, getting great looks, just not able to, to make the basketball connect. So we'll go to halftime. The Gamecocks leading by 29 from Columbia. Halftime from Columbia, South Carolina leads Charleston Southern 35 to six. Dave and Brett with you. The Buccaneers, Brett, just two for 20 from the field in the first half. Anemic offense, but credit to South Carolina defense. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is turnovers, uh, 11 turnovers. Um, Coach talked about that and managing those turnovers, you know, it's tough to have, the, tough to score when you don't have the basketball. And a lot of these tur turnovers, again, have been due to South Carolina suffocating offense, but they've also been due to just self-inflicted wounds, you know, a walk here and there, travel here and there, something that, you know, is usually from nerves or just, again, not being completely locked in. So, but um, as we talked about before, this is a great example for conference play, preparing them for conference play. South Carolina not shooting that well either, but second chance points have been the short story for them. Again, again, that's what they have to work for them. When they're not doing well from the field, they have second chance points, they have rebounds, they have fast break points, they have bench production, they have all of these um, of opportunities to score when the shooting is not working well for them, but they've done a phenomenal job with scoring in transition, and again, the bench production being able to step in and score as well. And we saw the debut of Chloe Pitt, six points so far. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you wouldn't have told me that she was coming from a uh, uh, High school, I would have never known. She transitioned so well into the game. I mean, she was uh, diving on loose balls, uh, running for rebound, running to grab rebounds, um, knocking down the shots, knocking down her free throws. Two, uh, one out of the two free throw opportunities that she had. But she looks like she was comfortable with the unit that she was playing with, and we're just excited to can continue to see more of her production. And before the game began, after the anthem, Malia Boston was presented with the Honda Cup. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's no surprise. She just had, you know, swept awards um, last season. Um, and in addition to her um, being a, a phenomenal uh, basketball player, she's just an overall, you know, good person off the floor. Um, and to, again, just to be able to come into the program and not only win the award over just women's basketball, but the entire out of all the sports, um, it's just pretty amazing. Well, it's an award presented to the top female collegiate athlete across all sports, presented by Jenny Gilger of the Collegiate Women's Sport 
Award. She's the first player in South Carolina history to earn that honor. It's voted on by senior women administrators across the country, originally televised in June, but it was presented to her today inside the Colonial Life Arena. Brett, what an honor. Yeah, what an honor. And again, I think it's just these are the type of accolades that make people want to come to Columbia, uh, come to South Carolina and say, hey, you know, man, I have the ability to do that. I see what Aaliyah done, um, has kind of just paved the way. And, you know, that's an inspiration to people want to come and be a part of the program. So Boston and her Gamecocks lead 35 to 6 here at halftime. We'll have stats and highlights right after this. Welcome back inside Colonial Life Arena. It's a large lead for the Gamecocks over the Bucks here at halftime. Dave and Brett, 35 to six. And South Carolina started early and they started with three point shots. Yeah, absolutely. As we talked about earlier, coming into the game, shooting only 28%. And now they're shooting 34% from the art. But again, when you have the capabilities of, of shooting from you know, Cook, from Beal, um, they, they're just able to knock down those shots, particularly when the attention, so much of the attention is pulled towards the post players. Um, when the guards are out on the, uh, on the beyond the art, they're just able to have the capability of knocking those shots down. And they spread the offensive round offense around 10 of 12 Gamecocks have scored so far. Yeah, absolutely. Again, and we're talking about bench production. Um, just the ability to go um, deep into the bench, so when the starting five are not uh, scoring, you just have the opportunity for the bench, you know, the call on the, the reserves to be able to, again, get in the game and not skip a beat with the rhythm of the game. We're going to take a look at some highlights from the first half, and all the highlights belong to the Gamecocks. Again, we talked about three-point shooting, and here you have it from Zai Cook, the player to watch. Definitely has the ability to knock that shot down. They do a three for four from three early on. Cook, Beal, three Hall. Hall, that's a great shot from her. And she definitely has the ability to knock that shot down as well. And we saw the debut of Mo Gibbs. Absolutely. She, again, like I said before, she did not skip a beat with transition into the game. Three Beal with five points, four rebounds, and a steal in the first half. That's a three Beal half. Again, then what she does, what she does best. She's all over the place, all over the stats. Um, just a full um, country, a whole con contributor to the game when she's on the floor. And Leah Boston, of course, was presented with the Honda Cup before the game. Eight points and nine rebounds in the first half for Leah Boston. Again, no surprise here. Leah Boston does what she does best. She puts the basketball in the hoop. And again, when she does that, she, again, puts, her puts the Gamecocks in the lead. She's in line for double-double, number 67 of her career. And the new woman on campus. Yeah. That's there, Chloe Kitts. There she is. Again, like I said before, you wouldn't have thought that she skipped the beat. She, she transitioned right in with the unit that she, had, she she was playing in with. Even though she was sharing the floor with two other freshmen, um, again, she looked like she was just right at home. And some stats from the first half. That field goal percentage low for... Charleston Southern. Is there anything they can do, Brett, offensively in the second half? Um, they have to manage their turno turnovers. You know, they have to slow down and not get intimidated by, you know, by the shot, uh, by the size of South Carolina. Still going up for that shot, um, trying to get draw the foul. But again, they have to manage and protect the basketball and just play smart. Again, not to get rattled up, not to allow to get um, to get nervous or rattled by South Carolina Southern's defense. And it's tough. Uh, but again. This is an opportunity to learn what smothering defense looks like, and they can take this um, this game and apply it to their conference play. Their impressive young freshman point guard, Catherine Aubin, will be starting the second half in the backcourt playing alongside Zaire Hicks. As they look for an offensive spark. Aubin pulls up. In and out, no good. Fight for the rebound. What is it off of? Off of Aaliyah Boston, so it'll stay with CSU. I mentioned in the first half some of Albin's totals in the wins, but she's been good in some losses as well. 11.7 rebounds against East Carolina. Nine points last game against ETSU. Maybe she can spark some offense in the second half for the Buccaneers. 
Hicks, nice look to nice. Jones, but the defense is there for the Gamecocks. Man, beautiful, nice pick and roll play. Again, just have to get the ball to connect, and I think that's been the story this entire game. Like, they've been getting the looks, but just can't get the finish. And an early timeout, 25 remaining in the third quarter. Coach Bailey unhappy with something she saw. Yeah, it looks like the officials are, you know, having a discussion. Kira Fletcher has exited. So hopefully she's okay. Bree Hall in for South Carolina. And they'll swing it to Zaya Cook for three. Off the mark. The rebound in the hands of Adamson. This is Albin. Comes to a stop. Now CSU will set up their half court offense. Sire hooks from three. No good. Beal with the rebound. An open look in the corner. Beal passes on it. Instead, it's Saxton. Hall flies in for the rebound. Again, the second chance opportunity. Hall for three. Off the mark. Zaya Cook with the board. And the Bucks are giving a ton of space to the three-point shooters for South Carolina, but they'd rather get it inside to Aaliyah Boston. Yeah, absolutely. You know, inside first. Um, this, that's their game, inside inside look first and then kick it out to the three-pointers, uh, kick it out to the guards on the three-point line. But again, that's what's so dangerous about this team is that they, when you put so much focus on the uh, post players, you leave guards who are scoring threats out beyond the arc and they have the capability of knocking that down. Cook, Bill, Hall, all have the capability of knocking down the three-pointer. Saxton wrestling inside, she's fouled. to the line, couple substitutions for CSU. Lay and Jackson back in. Foul will be called on Auburn, her second. So Victoria Saxton to the line, a 75% free throw shooter. Preseason second team, all SEC member. Hits the first. Haven't scored a lot this season, 4.4 points per game. Just two points and only 11 minutes played at South Dakota State. She does a lot of the little things for the Gamecocks. That's the second. Yeah, Coach you're right. Coach Staley said that intangibles yeah. are what mm -hmm. she's really good at. For sure. Again, just one of those solid players that you can just, and a leader on and off the floor that you can just count on, just that you need, you know, in your lineup. And she brings that every single game. They get it into Jackson. No good. Adamson keeps it alive. Great hustle play. Great hustle play. Bucks swinging around. This is Albin. She'll drive and dish to Jackson against Boston. No good. Boston with the rebound. And Cook looks to push. Free Hall. Pass is stolen by the Buccaneers. Catherine Albin. How about that shot? Nice, aggressive drive to the basket. And again, that's what Coach was expecting out of her freshman. This is not afraid to go in and attack the basket. We're going to need more of that from her. The response on the other end from Bree Beal. Beal has seven. The Buccaneers have had two really good offensive possessions in the last two, uh, last two plays. Kennedy Jackson against Hall. Shot no good, had the height advantage over Bree Hall. Yeah, as you can see earlier, Jackson was calling for, hey, give me a ball, give me the ball. I see there's a, uh, a mismatch here. I need the ball to take advantage of this scoring opportunity. Double team on Boston. So swinging around. Now it's Saxton. Hall for three. Short. Albin will look to push. She is fast. Catherine Albin off the glass. No good. The tip from Adamson. And she is fouled. 
Nice athletic play. Again, uh, this is, uh, Albin is extremely fast and a great opportunity for her to score there and a good follow-up, but again, just unable to connect. Well, the foul is going to be called on Adamson, so it'll be Incock basketball. I thought she was fouled originally, but. Yeah, I thought so too. Cardozo in for the Gamecocks. Playing with Boston. So 6-7 and 6-5 on the floor, and it's 6-7. Cardozo will be fouled. It's called on Auburn. She picks up her third. And Camila Cardozo will head to the line. Cardozo, season high 15 rebounds against South Dakota State on Thursday. Drains the first. 18 points earlier this season against Memphis with 10 rebounds for her second double-double. She was SEC Player of the Week back on December 7th after that Memphis game. How about being able to bring an SEC Player of the Week off the bench? Yeah, <laughs> again, it, shows, it goes to show the depth that South Carolina has in their reserves, the talent that they have in their reserves there. Ten seconds for Andrews. She'll drive, triple teamed. It's knocked out of bounds off the Gamecocks. She had the right idea of trying to attack the basket. She was drawing three white jerseys there and try to dish it off, but again, the size just didn't uh, work out into her favor. One second for Adamson, high off the glass. Boston. Chloe Kitts, she was impressive in the first half. Yeah, it's interesting to see her out on the floor now with this lineup, she's the only freshman Beal drains the three, it was a wide open look. Again, Beal just can't leave her open because she has the capability of knocking that down. And she, she shoots it with ease, like, you know, it's part of her game. And it's, there's no surprise when she makes it. There's no surprise when she gets rebounds. There's no surprise when she gets steals because that's just part of who, who she is as a player. Four-year starter in Beal, she has 10. 46 to eight, our score here in the third quarter. Zaya Cook. Wow, what a phenomenal athletic play by Zaya Cook. Again, we talked about before at the beginning of the game, just an explosive athletic guard. Could just read the defense and just get to the basket and just win dribble. Preseason All-SEC member. She's been All-SEC each of the last two seasons. Jackson. Boston stands her ground. Shot no good. See Jackson expressing a little frustration there. Hits, pulls up, and hits. Oh, what a shot. What a shot. Ready to be ready to just run and shoot. I mean, she's she's done everything so far in this game. Uh, crashed the boards, shot it from the three, and just run in transition with the pull up. Uh, again, a great, great future for Kitts. Kitts joining the team on December 13th. Averaged 18.7 per game last season in high school. Went to high school in Daytona Beach, Florida. Cardozo no good. And Andrews looks to push. Two on two here for the Bucks. Adamson will dribble out. See the mess. Looks like there's a little mesh max on the inside. A little rough play. Chloe okay. Kitts for her first foul. And it brings us to immediate timeout. 3.04 left to go in the third quarter. South Carolina leads Trust the Southern 50 to 8. Welcome back inside Colonial Life Arena. All Gamecocks so far, they moved 50 to 8 over Charleston Southern. 3.04 left to go in the third quarter. It's been a struggle for the Bucks today, but that was to be expected, Brett. Second year of the rebuild for Coach Garcia and company. It's quite an overhaul this season. Seven newcomers, six freshmen 
added to a team that finished just 2-27 and 27 a season ago, but they've already matched that win total from last year. Looking to add more wins when they get into Big South play later this month and take that next step. They only have 11 players on the roster. Coach Garcia told me, you know, they're building, they'll fill that next year. They have some good players coming in, but a rebuild it takes some time. She said, I just have to give myself a grace period. She said, I want to win yesterday. Coach Garcia officially started coaching June 1st of last year, late in the cycle. So she decided to just ride that group she inherited. Didn't want to fill in the team quickly with some names she didn't know. She didn't want to go portal heavy. It's about building and cultivating a group and building that culture. It's very important to Coach Garcia. So just the one addition last season in Madison Adamson, who Coach Garcia was already familiar with from recruiting her sister at Alabama, and then the six freshmen this season. So the rebuild is underway. And more reinforcements are coming next season. And you're absolutely right, Dave. We talked about before like how every successful coach now has a, again, <laughs> Zaya Cook uh, doing what she does best, taking, a, taking it to the basket all the way, recognizing the defense and attacking it. Um, but again, we talked about before rebuilding a, a program that every successful coach has, a, uh, has a, a moment where they can reflect and say, hey, I remember I was teaching at such and such or coaching at such and such program and we were not that good. And we had experienced not bringing or inheriting some players. Um, it had to take a little while to bring in some recruits. But again, most successful coaches go through that process where they um, they build something to to a stellar program or work on a winning program. And she's doing it the right way yep. at Charleston Southern. She's a delight to talk to on the phone. Jackson. Cardozo there defensively. Yeah, there's aggressive uh, play by Jackson. She has to go up and get that foul and get the chance the opportunity to go to the free throw line. 13 seconds on the shot clock for the Bucks. Carly Andrews pulls up for three. Rainbow shot, no good. Offensive board for Jackson. Lay gets it inside of Jackson. Turn around, she's fouled. Good to see Jackson again still being active, and she's really been calling for the basketball the, the entire game. So kudos to her to just not giving up on plays, but especially in those times that she have been had a have had a mismatch with Cook. Uh, Jackson continues, you know, to, to move in the paint and continue to work and go up against the, the bodies that she you know has a disadvantage for her on in, in size. We talked about the struggles earlier this week against ETSU for Jackson, but she's had some nice games for the Bucks this season. Double-double in the previous game against College of Charleston. 14 points, 13 boards, two blocks. 15 and nine against Georgia Southern. The transfer from Oklahoma State. Limited action though for the Cowboys. Five games last year, four the year before. And she redshirted her first season in Stillwater. Ten seconds for Pui Beal. Kitts, foot on the line, shot no good. Andrews, freshman from Auburn, Alabama, averaging just over 20 minutes a game. Hicks thought about it. Instead, it's Lay with 10 seconds. She'll drive. Pulls up as her shot blocked by Bree Beal. And Lay has been one of those players who have not been able to been afraid to shoot it. You know, even when she didn't have the best luck early in the half or earlier in the game with shooting the shot, she has continued to shoot and she can she continues to um, be confident in her shot. And that's what you have to do, not just against this team, but in any team. If you shoot the miss the first one, you have to keep shooting. Minute remaining in the third quarter. Cook unloads from three. Got it. There it is, Zaya Cook. Doing what she does best beyond the arc, knocking it down. 36% three-point shooter coming into today. Cook has 13. Jackson is 
asking for it inside. They can't get it to her. Instead, it's Zaire Hicks. Now Lay. There's Kennedy Jackson. Hits the tough two. Nice, great shot. Great job by Kennedy Jackson to continue to move. She recognized where the ball was. And again, she moved opposite, almost like in a similar high-low action. But again, just continuing to move to move without the basketball, creating an open opportunity for her to score. Three seconds for Zaya. Zaya Cook <laughs> finds a way. Of course, Zaya Cook finds a way to get the ball in the bottom of the net. Great shot by Zaya Cook. So that takes us to the end of the third quarter. 59 to 11, the lead for South Carolina. Zaya Cook with 16 points. Her third three-pointer. All Gamecocks from Columbia. Getting ready for the start of the fourth quarter. South Carolina leads Charleston Southern 59 to 11. Brett, we had a chance to talk with Coach Garcia. She told us something about nonprofit that she's involved with. Uh, her and her best friend started called Play Bowl. And they build courts over in Africa. They've been in Uganda, Kenya. And she said, what COVID taught us is we can remote build as well. We had been going over there to build them. And we partner with existing organizations on the ground, able to create jobs for people there to build the courts, raise the money. The Play Bold is what it's called. And Bold stands for Beyond Ourselves, Love Does. And the heart of it is to get student athletes to do something for others that don't have as much. She said, we don't force it on the players. One of the players from Auburn came over on one trip. But her plan is to go back over this coming May or August, try to get back to Uganda again. And when they get over there, they participate in the build. They initially started by just asking students to come over and do camps and clinics. And by year three, it was, hey, let's build a court. They mix the cement. They help lay it. Outdoor courts. And Coach Garcia loves to travel and through mission work and basketball which of course fits well at a school like Charleston Southern. Yeah, and I think it's amazing to have coaches that, a uh, coach that, you know, values, you know, mission work and basketball. Um, it just really shows the power of sports um, and what you can do through sports. And a lot of times with athletes, uh, student athletes particularly, you don't have a lot of time to, you know, travel. Well, you're already traveling, but don't have a lot of time to do work outside of school, uh, school and outside of the basketball obligation. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity to, um, again, get into the community, and even if community is out of the country, um, and just give the athletes some experience. And a chance to give back, and it's a tremendous learning experience as well. Yeah, yeah, abso absolutely, a chance to give back. And um, again, I just think that's a, just super awesome just to be able to uh, have a coach that values that type of work and able to get, still be in contact with our other players, you know, from other universities. And at that point, um, great shot by Jackson, great shot by her to, again, get on the board. But again, to get the, the players the opportunities to uh, to do something, to be a part of something that's bigger than basketball, because we both know, you know, it's not about the stats that you um, put on the boards, but you know, the impact the the impact that you make on other people's lives through the role of sports, through the lens of sports. And it helps to grow the game. Yeah, for sure. Steal for Hicks. And we think about it, and sometimes we take it to uh, advantage that. Everyone has access to sports. Everyone has access, um, and that's not true. And by um, through this organization, we're able to expand the game. Another great shot by by Jackson. Back again, to back baskets for Kennedy Jackson. Great to see her on the boards, and again, hopefully these two shots just again continue to, to build up her confidence with scoring. Cooper from the corner, off the mark. The tip from Cardozo is no good. Bree Hall in the paint, and she draws the foul. Hall has definitely been one of the white jerseys that have been crashing the boards. She's gotten to been, have has contributed to a, a lot of South Carolina second chance points. And again, as you can see now, she's rewarded for crashing the boards and getting drawn the foul. Brie Hall, 69% free throw shooter coming into today. From McDonald's All American hits the first. The number five guard and the number 14 player in the class of 21. Big part of the future here at South Carolina. Drains them both. Jackson's continuing to call for it. She's working in the post. 
She's matched up with Ashlyn Watkins. Under 10 for the Bucks. This is Jasmine Jackson. Three seconds, fires from three. Way off. There's one thing about Jackson. She just does, does not stop working. The entire possession, again, she was calling for the ball. She was moving around walking as the best as she could. But she continues to see walking slightly. <laughs> Loses her shoe. Now she's gathering and regathering herself. But Jackson has not stopped moving this entire game. Baseline jumper was off the mark. It was almost like a pass to Cardozo. Yeah, pretty much. Cardozo is so long at 6'7". Shot from Hicks is no good. Back-to-back -back air balls for CSU. Fans here at CLA letting them hear it. Hall on the drive, she kicks it out. Pitts, a look from the corner. No good. Cooper with the rebound. Nice cleanup shot. Great shot by Kitts. Well, she's, I believe that she has the capability of knocking that down, but good cleanup shot by, by Cooper. Cooper, utility player that can do a little bit of everything. Which Daly says the best thing about her is just that she competes. Yeah, for sure. And you've seen that. And again, even she's the type of player that even if she doesn't show up on the stats, you know when she's in the game again, she doesn't, she continues the rhythm of the game. And she's becoming and developing to a dependable player. Tried to whip it inside to Jackson. Instead of the turnover, Cooper loses the handle for a moment. Looks like she's running a little bit of point guard position. It's usually attributed to Johnson or Fletcher. Yeah, we've seen the spot Cooper at the point a bit this season, not often. Hall from the corner, rattles it in. Nice shot from Breezy. It's a great shot for her again. That's what's happening. That's what can happen when you leave her open. We have a timeout on the floor with 5.51 to go in the fourth. And South Carolina has a 68 to 15 lead over Charleston Southern. Chloe Pitts making her debut for the Gamecocks. They're happy to have her. She has eight points and six rebounds, the freshman from Florida. Again, she just seemed to have such a smooth transition into the team, even with all of her, um, even the different units she was in. And she came in with um, a couple freshmen, Cooper, Watkins. She played well with them. And again, just making her a great debut. Upcoming schedule for the Gamecocks. Just one more in the non-conference, Coastal Carolina. Shantz comes to Columbia on December 21st. It'll be here on SEC Plus. And SEC action starts with Texas A&M. Yeah, right, up, right after Christmas break, right before the New Year starts, um, getting a peek into conference play. It's going to be excited to see how the freshmen um, respond to the, the, the new in so many ways, a new season, relatively. A new season, new looks, um, a different style, um, different style of play. Um, I think, again, that's what most people um, wait for is, you know, their conference play because um, conference, you know, obviously determines a lot of other things um, in terms of your postseason play. Um, again, great time for SEC play to start. Charleston Southern will be starting Big South play soon as well. Jones is calling for the ball. She recognizes the mismatch on Cooper. Great shot. It's Hicks who dreams the three. Zaire Hicks, a 21% three-point shooter. And the South Carolina lead is now 68 to 18. It's good to see for Hicks, see, see that shot connect for Hicks. I know she's, uh, she's been shooting the all game, just not having much luck in having them connect. So good to see her continue to shoot. Yeah, previously played at UT Martin, began her career there back in 2017, so she's a veteran. Got some big games at UT Martin her sophomore year. Foul called on Bree Hall, her first. And it'll send Carly Andrews to the line 
Freshman guard from Auburn, Alabama. Andrews didn't play in her first three games of the season, made her debut on November 16th at George Mason. Six points against the Patriots. And it's getting loud here in Colonial Life Arena, which means Chick-fil-A is on the line. <laughs> and Chick-fil-A is granted. <laughs> So everyone going home happy here inside CLA, including Talasia Cooper, who gets the layup. Hicks. Well, Cardozo thought she had the clean block, but she's gonna be called for the foul instead. have a timeout on the floor with 4.58 remaining here in the fourth quarter. South Carolina leads Charleston Southern 70 to 18. Back here in Columbia, South Carolina leads Charleston Southern 70 to 18. Another double-double today for Aaliyah Boston. 10 points, 13 rebounds. Four of those 13, Brett, were offensive, which ties her for second place all time in program history in offensive rebounds. Yeah, absolutely. Again, this must have been a, a Leah Boston Award Day um, because of her accomplishments that she had been been able to do and, and reach. And I think this is a really a true testament of her ability to be consistent. Um, anyone can have a, a great season or a great game. Uh, one or, or one or two great games back to back, but to do that every night in, night out, and know that you're on Team Scouting reports as a as, as a target player to stop, um, that it, it's just amazing. It goes to show what type of player she is. To, to that can, her consistency has put her again in the history books of Carolina women's basketball. No better player in college basketball than Aaliyah Boston, reigning Player of the Year. Hicks gets a couple. It's a 50 point lead for the Gamecocks with under five minutes remaining. Hall finds Kitts. The long two is good. Nice shot. Again, Hicks looks, kicks. Looks like she is just providing that consistent um, ability to be able to knock down that, that shot. Um, two pointer and as well as a three. Don Staley, when talking about Chloe Kitts' arrival, she said, you know, she just fits, she's unafraid. They want her to be in a position to have a positive experience this season. Mm -hmm. We'll play her on the perimeter, similar to how they play in me here. We talked about that. Here's a turnover, and Watkins the other way. And there's a the stop. <laughs> right what, <in> a bit. <laughs> what, a, what a play. I think the crowd was waiting for her. As we said before, when she gets on the runway, she is ready to take flight, and that she did again. And a response from the Bucks. <laughs> Great shot. That's Carly Andrews. I think Watkins was the first Gamecock to dunk a basketball at Clemson. Every time she's going to be on a breakaway. Yeah, her I think career yeah. here, Brett, at South Carolina. Yeah, I fans think are going to be on their feet here inside CLA. I agree. I think everyone on this game can't stood to their feet. Waiting for waiting for the dunk. An open look for Cooper. That's good. Good shot by Cooper. Cooper was a 3,000 point scorer in high school. Number 18 player in the class at 22. Under three remaining. Hicks. Gives it to Jackson. Shot's no good from in close. And it'll be South Carolina basketball. 
That's just a great move. Even though Jackson couldn't get that, get that to connect, it shows goes to show that she's been moving without the basketball the entire game. And when you move without the basketball, you just increase your chances of being able to be in the position to score. So she, her feet has not stopped moving. Um, again, just had have had a tough time to get the basketball to connect. Olivia Thompson has checked in for South Carolina, senior guard from Lexington. Cardozo baseline, no good. Hits with the offensive rebound. Follow up is off. Cardozo, a third opportunity, a fourth opportunity. Almost and one for. Cooper, but she'll head to the line. Yeah, again, just second chance, second, third, and fourth chance points on that particular play in South Carolina. White jerseys all in the paint, grabbing for the rebound. And it really started with Chloe Kitts, not being afraid, as you mentioned before. Um, she, she does not seem to be afraid. She has just jumped in this game, and you know, you wouldn't have any been able to tell that she just come back from high school because she just transitioned so well into this game. She just seems like she's at home and feels comfortable with every unit she's been in. She's tall, she's agile, can shoot. Coach Taylor said she makes good decisions. She said everyone in the country can use a Chloe Kitts. Oh, yeah, for sure. Andrews, now Albin. And the steal uh -huh. from Watkins. She Here she way. comes once again. <laughs> Off the glass and in for Ashley Watkins. Great job for Watkins. Again, continue to shoot and shooting the gap. She's able to, she's just long, athletic, and just able to get that steal. Trying to get it inside of Jackson. It's knocked away by Cardozo. We're going to have a foul called on Kennedy Jackson. Kitts has 10. Thompson in the corner. Connects. Dang, then there's a three from Thompson. Love to see her knock down that shot, and so does the bench. Her third three-pointer of the season. All of her shots have been from behind the arc. Now three for 12. Trying to respond, that was Hicks. Up ahead, it's Cooper. And one. Great pass. That starts with walking, seeing the floor, having her head up, and then getting the ball to Cooper and getting the ball to the place where Cooper was going. And for Cooper to continue to um, to continue to move towards the basketball, she was rewarded with the finish, and now she's at the free throw line. The foul was on Kennedy Jackson, so she fouls out. But great play by, uh, just a great game by Kennedy Jackson, doing what she could do best against the bigs of South Carolina, um, continue to move. Great shot by Cooper, but continuing to move. Um, even though there was a mismatch, she continued to communicate with her teammates, um, recognizing when there was, a, again, a mismatch, recognizing when she needed the ball. Um, again, just great um, productivity and contribution to her team for this game. Cooper has 14. That's a career high. One minute remaining and under 10 for Albin. She'll drive on Cardozo. Cardozo gets a piece of that. <laughs> Alvin uh, taps her chest and makes a little chuckle. She's like, hey, coach, that, that was on me. Alvin goes 5-7, and Cardozo goes 6-7. Cooper for three. Off the mark and the rebound. In between the legs of Adamson, she's tied up. Heads up play from Coley Kitts. Yeah, nice aggressive play again. Every time a shot goes up, you find number 21 somewhere near the board, somewhere near the basketball, um, somewhere near the ba basket, crashing the boards for the rebound. It'll be interesting to see how many minutes she gets on average this season, how it affects the rotation that was already in place before her arrival. For her, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it would be interesting to see as well, particularly as we move into um, SEC play. Um, and obviously, given her time to come in, she has a less experience than any other uh, player on the team. So we'll see how she line, um, how she works into the lineup, again, going into SEC play. This is Albin. Her shot is swatted 
by Cooper. Cooper, again, someone that has just been all, all over the stat sheet for this game. Um, again, starting out as just a floor general, but not, now getting uh, SC on the, on the scoreboard. Allberg no good. It'll be Gamecock basketball. I haven't seen a lot of Allberg in the second half, one of the international players for CSU. Allberg from Sweden and Garcia, who we have not seen from Spain. South Carolina defeats Charleston Southern 87 to 23. The Gamecocks improve to 11 and 0. Charleston Southern drops to 2 and 9. Yeah, great matchup again. I feel like for both teams to prepare for for conference play. Again, as we talked about before, just the turnovers with Charleston Southern was going to be uh, really tough to be able to have the basketball or not have the basketball um, when you're so turnover prone. And again, uh, South Carolina changed it up a little bit when they were, you know, added Chloe Kitts to the lineup. In addition to the players that have already been contributing this uh, this season, and those players are um, Hall, Bill, um, Kitts, Watkins, Cooper. Um, again, uh, Cardoso just done an amazing job. Um, Fletcher, amazing job. Again, getting uh, South Carolina uh, this W tonight. Next up for the Gamecocks, Coastal Carolina on December 21st. Next up for the Bucks. Big South play and Gardner-Webb on the 29th. For Brett Ball and the rest of our crew, I'm Dave Weinstein saying so long from Columbia, South Carolina, a winner over CSU, 87-23.